Hi everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Reviewed. All right, everyone, welcome to a standard tradition in the book world, the mid-year freak out day. I can't remember if I did this last year. I know that I've done it many different times, but I think last year I missed it. I will also still be doing my video or maybe it will already be up I don't know which one I'm going to put up first that has all of my six star reads so far this year um, six stars is my own personal little rating system where I have my very favoritest books get six stars and I've done that for quite a few years now um, it's just how I differentiate because I love giving books five stars I'm not picky in that regard but I am very picky about what gets the upper echelon of my uh, feelings about it or my upper echelon of ratings but we're gonna do the mid-year freak out tag go through the questions so some of my six star books are gonna be in here because you know it's by virtue of that but you can check out the video to find out all of the favorites so far as we hit halfway through the year so this is a tag that is available for everyone to do I don't even know who started at this point it's been so long uh, but the the questions will be listed down below at least and I'll also have links to all of the books that I'm talking about I'm also trying out the new like products thing on YouTube so there will also be links to the Barnes and Noble versions of the books as well um, so if you'd like to buy from them if you want to get your points from them or whatever that should be an option for some of these as well not all the books are available with Barnes and Noble but if they are I'll have those so anyway all that out of the way let's get into the questions question number one what is the best book so far as we have said so what I'm going with and I'll talk about these books a lot because a lot of the questions will get around to it is I am going with my favorites being the Frozen Fate series or it will be a trilogy by Pam Godwin um, this is a very dark uh, taboo romance it's going to be a why choose scenario it involves being stranded in the Alaskan wilderness in the Arctic Circle um, this family who is stuck there there's a lot of nefarious things going on up there and the third book is coming in August I'll be talking about that later on in this video too but I was just really moved by this story it was also very shocking has lots of suspense elements and thrilling elements as well and it was just it's so amazing to be reading new books from Pam Godwin she's been on a hiatus working on this trilogy for so many years and it's just been amazing to read this series is so epic what is the best sequel you've read so far so in the uh, way to not be too repetitive with everything I am picking one of my others one that I just finished and gave a, a really high rating to was honey cut by Sierra Simone this one is book two in the trilogy um, thankfully I think by the end of this year are we getting the last one are we gonna get it before the end of this year I can't remember oh no it's coming next year damn it We'll have to wait. But yeah, Honeycut is book two in the Lioness trilogy. This is going to be an MMF, but we're not quite there yet. This book, in my opinion, is probably will be the angstiest because that's just how it works. There's cheating in this one. There's an arranged marriage. There is BDSM. There is a very powerful man named Mark. And then we also have a very powerful woman named Isolt is also a retelling of Tristan and Isolde, which I've never read that play or myth or whatever. I never have. But, uh, you know, I know that it's it's a tragedy and not a, a romance, so I'm guessing it's pretty intense. But this involves, like, falling for the bodyguard, but both the husband and the wife have fallen for the bodyguard, and they just can't keep away from him. Um, it's very emotional, very sexy. Um, no one writes erotic romance like Sierra Simone does, and this is true erotic romance where the sex is just as important as the story it moves the characters along it was just it was wonderful so yeah we'll say this is my favorite sequel but there's a lot of good stuff okay new releases that i still want to get to so i'm gonna do this with ones so they're ones that are already out because there's another question of like what i'll want to read so 
a couple books that are already out that I missed when they came out. As you know, I have really big TBRs every month and lots of new releases where I'm reading the arcs for them. And so there are a few books where I'm not reading the arcs and if I'm not reading the arcs then sometimes it's tricky to get around to the book. But there's a couple that I'm really interested in still getting to. Um, there is Cruelly Bitten by Lexi C. Foss. This is a book I've been waiting, I believe it's been literal years for at this point. Um, she had had a baby in there, she wasn't feeling quite inspired, she reworked this last book and so um, I haven't got around to it but this is wrapping up. Um, her blood is it no it's not the blood alliance that's a different series i can't even remember what the series is called it's been so long but this is the final book in this bloody vampire like in um humans are slaves in this world um type series it was very bloody and very intense and i remember loving it when i read it and so i want to finish off this series but also I don't remember it super well because it's been so long at this point and I've read literally hundreds of books since then. But I do want to get to this book sometime this year. I want to round this out. So I'm going to make it a point to get to it at some point. All right, then um, I also would like to catch up with Jagger Cole. Um, I've only read the, did I read the first two books in this series? I don't know. Um, he has his current series that he's writing and I don't know. It, it was just when I was looking at ones I want to get to, I do want to because I know some of my friends are still staying caught up with the series and they've liked some books in this new one. And so I, he's an author I really fell for last year and I do still want to enjoy his books. He's going to be getting audios done of a lot of his books now, which I think will be great. That will mean a lot of people who rely on the audiobooks will get the chance um, to read him now, which will be great. All right, then we have the most anticipated still for the second half of the year. So this was really hard to narrow it down, but I do make these videos, which if I remember, I'll link them up above, where I do quarterly the most anticipated books for the next quarter. So the most recent one I just did was for the summer books that are coming. And I have four books that I'm going to share <laughs> because I can't help myself. Um, a couple of them are from summer and then there is some from the winter as well. So as I mentioned, I'm very much looking forward to the conclusion of the Frozen Fate series. The third and last book will be A Heart of Frost and Scars by Pam Godwin and uh, the cover was just recently released and I am just very much anticipating what this woman is going to write us. Like I... I have no idea how she's going to wrap up this trilogy, but I can't wait to see how because she's the bomb. She's the bomb. The Sweetheart Deal by Sophie Lark should be coming very soon. Um, I was expecting it to be coming in June. Now it looks like it'll be a little later, but she did promise summer. Um, this is her, the love contract is the series. I really enjoyed the first book and I love the three men that get introduced. This is going to be twins and then the dad will have the last book. So the first one was the love contract and then it's the sweetheart deal and then the redemption clause will be coming later. Can't wait for those as well. Then I also am looking forward to The Wraith King by Juliet Cross. This was supposed to come back all the way back in January. Um, I am friends with Juliet and her niece Jessen who are from the Smart Women Read Romance podcast which will be back soon by the way. It's coming back soon. Um, and the book just wasn't quite at the level she wanted it to be at when she read it back then. And so she kind of pushed it off then until she has time to rework it and get it perfected. And so it will be coming later this year. And isn't this cover just gorgeous? It's so beautiful. I cannot wait. Cannot wait to get it in my hands. It's going to be amazing. So excited. And then the last one that I decided to include, again, there are so many. I am deep in the book world, in the romance community, and so I always have my eye on, um, you know, what's coming next, right? But Beacon by Claire Kent. This will be the official end of the Kindled series by her, which I've been reading for years. It is one of my comfort reads. I love this series so much. Um, I want everyone to read it. There are also audiobooks coming for this series. And this will be 
Mac and Anna story, which I've been anticipating pretty much since I read um, Last Light, <laughs> which was years ago. And then she said there will be a spinoff series because she loves this world so much, but we don't know what that will mean, if it will be further years, if we'll go to a different part of the country, I have no idea. But all I know is I'm looking forward to Beacon coming later this year. All right, then we have Biggest Disappointment. Now, I won't harp on these too much because I like to be fairly positive, but I have one that's a disappointment that was just a disaster, and then one that it just didn't satisfy me the way that I was expecting it to. So the first one, maybe you can guess, and that was By Frenzy I Ruin by Cora Riley. Yes, I was still holding out hope that this book would somehow pull through for me, Cora Riley is one of my favorite authors still. I, I will not still, but she's still one of my favorite authors for the things she's written me in the past, but I've just not been impressed. And I, I hate that. I hate being disappointed over and over again, but by frenzy I ruin is finally the book that broke the camel's back. And I don't think I continue to carry the load of continuing to try with her books and it breaks my heart, but this book was a disaster to me. Um, I talk about, all about it in, um, both the vlog that I did for the Mafia Readathon, as well as, um, what else? When else did I talk about it? Oh, I think in the weekly wrap up where I read it, I really ranted about this one because it just drove me nuts. Okay, now the one that disappointed me that this wasn't as a visceral of a disappointment. This wasn't like I thought the book was bad or anything like that. But since it is disappointment, it's not asking for the worst books. It's asking for the most disappointing. So by Frenzy I Ruin was, and then this could be us. This is really hard to say. Um, but I was disappointed in this book and that makes me sad because I love Kennedy Ryan. I, she is one of my tippy top favorite authors of all time, but this book, it's more so a, my expectations were set in the wrong way. Let's just say that because her writing still powerful, this story still powerful. I know it's still very moving and, uh, well, important to others, but for me, it just, it missed the mark this time around because it really has tiptoed into women's fiction. And every friend I've talked to about it agrees. Like our hero in this book comes on the page fantastic and he leaves the page fantastic. He doesn't go through an arc at all. The arc in the storyline is 90% focused on Soledad. And that's understandable. She's going through some crazy things. She finds out a huge betrayal on multiple levels of her husband. She's now a single mom by a certain point here. And then there is Judah, who is kind of a reason why her husband is now in prison. Of course, she's not. Her husband's the reason her husband's in prison. But he's the one who kind of brings the cow's house of cards tumbling down and causes a lot of problems for her and her family but there's just something about him that's very attractive and she's pulled into him now again i don't need to do a full review of this but the reason why i brought that up is that judah again starts amazing and he ends amazing soledad's the one who goes through the journey and the romance just felt like it was sprinkled on top as an afterthought and the reason why that's disappointing is because i expect world shattering romances from Kennedy Ryan. I am sorry that my expectations are so high, but I haven't been let down in a really long time from a book of hers. And this just felt kind of like a fizzle and a slow, like, I'm not really going to remember Soledad and Judah's relationship past this year, you know, whereas, um, before I let go, whereas real, whereas grip and still, those are books that I can think of them and immediately remember how powerful they shook me. So that's why this is on the disappointed side for me, not for any drop in quality or any drop in, uh, like the, the, like story for the woman, but this didn't feel like a romance. It was, you know, a couple sex scenes at the end and them deciding to be together. I didn't feel like they went through anything together. It was Soledad deciding when she was ready for Judah and Judah didn't really get a say in any of it. And I just, that's not what I'm expecting from my queen. Okay. It's just not, but still fabulous. And if you don't mind women's fiction, if you don't mind that, I highly recommend that you read this. Just think of it as women's fiction going in because then then I think you will 
love this, right? Because if you like women's fiction with a good romance, then that's the book for you. So that's how I'd recommend that one. Moving along. What was your biggest surprise? So I picked two books for this one. And I, again, I didn't necessarily go with my very, very favorite ones because I wasn't necessarily as surprised by those. But I picked two that just, I was not expecting to love them so much. That's what I went with the biggest surprise. So one of those I picked was... Um, if You Give a Single Dad a Nanny by Anne Einerson. I thought this small town romance, single dad, um, neighbor next door. I loved this couple. Let's see if it'll, will it show you? There we go. Um, this is the cutest couple ever. Now I just forgot their names. Yeah, Marlo and Dylan are the couple and Dylan is a single dad and he just thinks that this next door neighbor is just wacky and crazy um, and I mean he thinks she's really pretty but he thinks she's very flighty and when her dog breaks into his backyard and just starts kissing his little girl he is like so mad about it which I can understand right but over the years uh, Marlo really kind of grows on him and when he's in a tight spot and he needs a nanny well she loves his little girl so much I think Layla is the little girl I believe so she's just the perfect uh, girl to, for the job and her dog and the little girl are like best friends and it's this like slow burn between the two of them um, and I thought they were just so cute together and I'm just really impressed with how Anne has grown. I've actually read um, the very first book that Anne wrote which she doesn't really talk about as much now um, which I enjoyed but it just was the type of story that like was very heavy and as she was going very more emotional route and when she made this switch over to kind of this small town like lighter books her stories just really pop. Um, the first one I read from hers was If You Give a Grump a Holiday Wish List. It was a holiday novella and I loved it so much. And the next one that's coming is If You Give a Billionaire a Bride. And, you know, I didn't put that on this list, but that's one I'm really looking forward to as well. So very surprised by this one. Now, the other one I want to mention, one I was really surprised by that came kind of out of nowhere for me. Um, it was a very, like, quiet book. But I was just really moved by it. And that is The Feud by uh, Sawyer Bennett, which you guys, I don't even think can read this yet. It comes out next week on her store, on her author page. And then a week later, it will go live for everyone. So this one isn't quite available to you guys yet. I had a ALC, which if you don't know, is an advanced listening copy, which is, you know, basically an ARC copy of an audiobook. And... I just, I loved this so much. This is a man finding out he has a daughter nine years on and the romance is not a second chance between him and the mother of the child. The mother of the child has actually just passed of brain cancer and he's finding out he has this daughter that is now going to be coming to stay with him only to add a whole nother layer to it this daughter is from a one night stand he had with a family rival. So there's this huge feud between the Blackburns and the Mar Dragons. Um, they are horse breeders and uh, whiskey, whiskey makers, alcohol makers, and they have had this feud for generations. And these two had a one night stand 10 years ago and she's recently died and she never told him about this child. So out of the blue, his daughter has just appeared and she has been told lots of lies about him and his family and so she wants nothing to do with him and he really wants to win her over and bring her into his family and like you know get to know his child now the romance in this one is actually between um the hero and the principal marcy who becomes the principal of um sylvie this little girl's school and she is a very compassionate woman. She cares so much for her students. And so she's really trying to help Sylvie to acclimate and feel welcome here. And um, our hero ends up asking her for a lot of advice and they just really connect over that. So this is actually a friends to lovers. So again, this was a very quiet story for it being called The Feud. And I just, I loved his family and how we were introduced to them and 
just how rich and beautiful it is. And so yeah, this was a surprising book to me because it wasn't even that like steamy either. It, I mean, it has some open door spice, it does, but it's really more just so cozy and beautiful. And like, I cried in this at different points, um, you know, watching Sylvie finally feel accepted and watching um, our hero, you know, become a dad. It was so cool. Like it doesn't just happen instantly. Um, he has no idea who this little stranger is who's giving him back talk and who hates him for, you know, reasons of nothing that he did. And so, yeah, I was just really surprised by it. Really enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, um, when this is available, I highly recommend you give it a go because it was really, it was really good. All right, then we have a new to me author or a debut author that you loved. So there are so many that I could list. And this is also um, going to be a whole nother video as well. Um, this year, I'm keeping track of every new author I've tried, whether they were debut or they're new to me. And so soon I will be making a whole video. I'll probably do that video in two parts. You know, like I'm going to do one at the midpoint because I already have about 40 authors who are new to me this year. And then I'll do one at the end of the year. But a recent uh, author pairing that I just really liked, and I've been talking about this book a lot, so I won't go into the details about it now. You can see it in my, in a recent wrap up as well as in a bunch of other videos I've talked about. But I really loved The Pleasure Protocol by Darcy Romaine. If you really enjoy erotic romance, if you like escort romance, if you like BDSM romance, I think you'll really enjoy this one. And these are two friends Darcy Romaine and Kat Alexander who wrote this, they did so kindly send me a uh, copy of this book and I love BDSM and I also love escort romances, which I have made a video about sex workers before. I think I've made a couple. Um, I, I love reading their stories and this was one that it was just a little bit kinky. It was very sweet. There are lots of fun scenarios together and I also love when like an escort and a client like fall for each other. I just really love that situation. So I really like this. I'm really looking forward to reading more from this, this uh, writing duo um, or if they ever branch out on their own too, I'd be interested in it. So I highly recommend if you love really spicy romance that you try this one and support a new author for sure. Okay, then newest fictional crush. Now, this one is difficult because I always have those. Look forward to at the end of the year, I always do my uh, updated book boyfriend list. I have one of these and I add to it every year. Um, but looking at, you know, I was looking at um, all the books that are my six stars to see who is the new crush. And without a doubt, honestly, it was Reese from Unsteady by Peyton Corinne. This book... I read this for my Patreon. It was picked for, was it hockey romance or fake dating or friends to lovers? I don't know. No, this one wasn't fake dating. I don't remember. I think it was for hockey romance because that was, I don't even know. I don't know why I read this one, but it was amazing. I cried. I laughed. I swooned. Um, Reese is a hero who has anxiety and she, he's a hockey player. He was injured on the ice. And then we have our heroine, Sadie, who's just trying to take care of her brothers and keep them from being taken by the foster system. And she's just working her butt off for that. Again, I won't go into full detail because all my six star books are getting their own video. But Reese was so swoony and the way that he refused to give up on Sadie, even when she wanted to push him away, he just was, it was so beautiful, y'all. I loved it so much. And the next book that she has coming was just announced. Of course, it's not coming until next year but I can't wait for more from this author because that was amazing. Okay, then my fave character. So this one, it didn't have to be a crush, but I mean, she kind of is a girl crush, but I also just think she is so badass. So I did pick Frankie from Hills of Shivers and Shadows because this woman is so resilient and brave and just, it doesn't mean she's not afraid. It doesn't mean she's not... Um, just completely overwhelmed by what happens to her. But when she gets plucked out of her life and taken from her husband and brought to this remote place in the Arctic Circle with these four men who are living out here and she has no idea what's going on or what situation she's been brought into, why she's been brought here or what her purpose is. I, 
don't know how I would have handled it. I mean, I probably would have curled up and died. But the choices that she makes and the way that she chooses to still, like, believe in humanity and still believe that there is hope, like, I just love that about her. And watching her journey in this book, the decision she makes, the way she handles things, like, I love her. I love her. I love her. And I cannot wait to see how her story ends and her to get a happily ever after because the girl's been through it. She's been through it. Okay, books that made me cry. Now, I always tell you, it's pretty easy to make me cry. I'm a big damn baby. I'm a big baby. Uh, but I decided to pick two that were kind of recent for me and really moved me. Um, and so one of them is new and one of them is a reread because it just, it made me cry so much. So I picked The Dixon Rule by Al Kennedy. And I was not prepared for how emotional this was going to be at the end. Um... For a lot of people, they disliked that it made them emotional at the end. I did not. I loved that it did because it came from such a real place. You know, this is a fake dating romance. There's a hockey player. There's a cheerleader. There's ballroom dancing. There's them being neighbors and her having, you know, misjudged him. And them, as they get to know each other, they have like a friends with benefits scenario. But they come to care deeply for each other. And I loved how their fake dating like very quickly was looking like, you know, real dating because they're spending so much time together. And I just loved how that grew for them. It was really, it was really beautiful to see, really beautiful. And there is some tragedy that happens at the end of this book. Um, and the way that they come, like the way that they support each other through it was just so real. Like I've seen real relationships like this. There wasn't this big third act breakup because of that tragedy either. It was no, when your loved one is going through that, what do you do? You step up, you step up. And that's what I saw. And so, yeah, this one, I cried some ugly tears for what was happening to this young couple and the stuff they were having to go through. Um, and it just, but I felt them so deeply by that point that it just felt so real to who they were. And I just, I loved it. So this is one that made me cry again, though. I cry a lot. All of the books that I gave six stars to are books that made me cry plus more than that. So this is a tough one. But then what I wanted to share for a reread, I actually just finished rereading this. I buddy read this book with Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life. She hasn't read it before. I had read it before. And I cried so many times listening to this because I listened to the audiobook. And that is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. So yeah, this is not my normal thing I share on my channel. I don't read a lot of classics. I'm not going to start reading a lot of classics. I'm not interested in them. And I don't feel like I need to uphold a certain level of literature to, you know, justify myself. I don't. And I'm also not sticking my nose up at anyone who wants to, but I'm not a classic reader. However, I first actually buddy read this book with Murphy from uh, Murphy Napier way back when. Um, we used to be really good friends um, and used to not as in there was a huge falling out. We've just kind of diverged obviously in what we read. Um, and we buddy read this book together back when she was reading a lot of classics. And I had loved the BBC drama which is fucking amazing. And we buddy read it and I loved it then. I really did. And honestly, the BBC version does a great job. Like honestly, if you've watched that, you've pretty much read this book. There's just, there's a lot more, of course, deeper things. There's a lot more discussions about both what's happening in the class differences and the striking stuff. And there's also a lot more into Mr. Thornton's insight. Y'all, the way this man pines, uh, the way he pines, it just rips my guts out. It's so angsty, but also like he's so precious. He's so precious. Okay. It is glorious. The only sad part is how abruptly this ends. Now I haven't talked about it in a long time, but there actually is a fan made like sequel that is published. It's not, it's not a, 
you know, like fan fiction that you can't read, like because this is a classic and the characters are no longer like copyrighted, there are, there is North and South like uh, stuff out there that you can buy, you know, the same way that there's like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies and stuff like that. There is one and it's called A Heart for Milton. And I immediately, when I finished this, wanted to read that one again too. I don't know if I'll have time to do it, but this is just so powerful. Margaret goes through so much and I love John Thornton with my whole soul honestly but I really got a better sense for Margaret this time around because there's a lot of loss and pain that happens and the way that she still tries to soldier on and find hope and a reason to keep going is is really beautiful and the way that I just know that they had such a beautiful life together afterwards like I can just feel so yeah, I just finished this. So that's why I put it on a book that made me cry because I just finished it. A book that made me happy, which again, most of them, but I again picked two. And this one I decided to pick if you give a single dad a nanny again, <laughs> because it really was so cute. The little girl in here is so cute. The puppy is so cute. Dylan is just almost too much of an asshole in the beginning, but he becomes the dreamiest and swooniest of book boyfriends that I forgive him for any like stubbornness or assholery he has in the beginning because he wins me over with spades. So look how big I'm smiling talking about this. Like it's just so cute. It's so cute. So I highly recommend this book. I've already talked about it twice. So you get the point. You get the point. Uh, but then I wanted to mention, and really this is a whole like author I kind of want to be mentioning, but I picked this book because this is the book where I was just like, this author is a whole nother level. So I picked All My Love by Daisy Jane. And Daisy Jane's an author that I did find last year. She was suggested to me by those of you who know how much I love my kinky or oddly specific uh, book recs. Um, and she has a lot, like her whole tagline is like writing um, kink for the everyday person kind of and so all of her books have something kinky and spicy in them and I just love it and this one is a female stalker romance it's a single dad um, they're neighbors she is a naughty naughty girl um, and just wants this man so much and she's been biding her time and waiting and boy once they get going once they get going the the juices are flowing the kink is kinking, the sexy is sexing, like, oh my god, I don't know what I just said, but it was crazy, and I just, like, the audacity of some of the stuff in here, but also, I just couldn't stop smiling and just being like, oh my god, oh my god, while I was reading this, like, there's fisting in this, there's squirting, there's toys, there's so much in this, okay, like, it's just, so as someone who really likes kinky things and likes to make these oddly specific videos, like I've put this book in so many videos in the last couple months because it's just fantastic. So I highly recommend pretty much any of Daisy Jane's. I've actually have so many of her still to read. I'm very excited about, um, and that she's just fun. Okay. The most beautiful books that I got this year. So this is also very difficult. So a couple things. One, I am very, very blessed to have so many wonderful friends and patrons who have sent me some special editions that they didn't want or have gifted me special editions through the year. So someday I'll make a full video of just all the prettiest books I have. I'm not going to be in a hurry to do that though, because it would just be, I'd have to take all the books off my shelves. But three books that I've acquired this year that I find the prettiest are... Um, this is actually just a, you can go buy this one. So this one isn't a special edition. Um, I just think it's beautiful. And that is Empire of the Damned by Jay Kristoff. Now I know the art style is a little strange. Not everyone's going to love this, but I love the full page art in here. I wish that I'd been able to get the Waterstones fully illustrated edition, but I'm too poor for that stuff. But there's still colored editions on both of the end papers which is amazing. And then this is a like fully illustrated book pretty much. Hold on. Let me find one. Of course there are pictures on literally like in every chapter. Um, and I just, I just love that. I love that this is, you know, a grim, dark 
full fantasy and there's illustrated stuff. So this, this is one of the prettiest books I got this year. It just is. And I love that it was just the regular edition and it has all the graphics in it. You know, really only one of the other authors who does that is like Sophie Lark. Um, also Brooke Montgomery has put some, um, art into her books as well, but like the quality and the beauty of those is fantastic. Who is the illustrator? Let's give credit where credit's due, especially in the age of everyone deciding they need to use AI all the damn time. Um, these are illustrated by Bon Orthwick. Bon Orthwick is the illustrator for these, which is fantastic. So there's that. Then we have a book that I actually just got in yesterday and I was like, ooh, I can't wait to share this. I forgot even that I'd ordered this because I ordered it so long ago. And you know, with some special editions, they take forever to get here. Um, but this one is God of Fury, the uh, book baddies edition of this. Now, I don't have any of the other editions, okay, because I wasn't reading the series yet when they started dropping and they were very expensive. But this one I was able to get the add-on and it was only like $40 and you could just purchase this one if you wanted. So I got it. So there's this. There is the Nikolai's mask on the sides. There's this here. Then it has a reversible dust jacket and so inside we have them this is beautiful gorgeous oh it's so pretty oh they're just so hot i love it and then here is the underside which is glorious there's the pictures in here look at like the broken paint set He's got the Lotus tattoo. So great. I love him so much. And then there's, I love this. This is Brandon and like, he's pulling his hair, you guys. So this was definitely worth the wait. I wish I had the other editions. I probably won't be able to get them. They're, I've seen some of them on Mercari, but the cheapest I've seen them for, right, is like $70 for one of them like god of malice is going for hundreds but god of fury is my favorite in this in this series thus far i'm not finished with god of war yet but thus far this is my favorite in the series and so i'm glad that i got this one that's okay i don't need the whole set i have this one now the last beautiful one i want to say this is one of my unicorn books this is one i was able to snag on mercari and i got it for i think 60 dollars um, I had been waiting and waiting for one to be the right price. Um, but yeah, this is a book that I was so, I was gut punched that I missed out on this book. Um, but I finally got it. I finally got it. And that is Tempt by Melanie Harlow, which this is number one. This is my favorite Melanie Harlow, but number two, this edition and then it has like a step back in it too. Who is this illustrator? Let me see if they put it in here. Cover art is by Dragon and Dire Wolf. That's the name of the person who did this. And then it also comes with a print of the step back, which is just so hot. So yeah, this is an age gap forbidden romance ex-boyfriend's dad and I finally got this one this year so this is one of my most treasured books that I have so yeah those are some of the prettiest books that I own I just love it okay now the very last question in this wow I did end up talking longer than I thought I mean shocker is what's the end of the year TBR so this is almost impossible for me to do just because um you know I have so many books on my end of year TBR that are like, you know, that aren't arcs, that are books outside of that that I want to get to. So two of those that I know for sure are the Rake Appreciation Society books. So I used to have this um, book club with my best friend, uh, Crystal from Crystal's Bookers Life. 
and we had it on pause for quite a while um, just due to life and so we're bringing it back for the summer so the two two books I know I'll be reading is the Marquis Who Mustn't by Courtney Milan and then Tempted by His Kiss by oh I just forgot her name do I, do I have it written down yet I don't think I have it written down on here yet shoot well I put up a picture um, it just whew, went right out of my head but those are two books I know I'll be reading and then at the beginning of the year I created my 12 recs for 12 from 12 friends list and I have only read four of the 12 um, and I don't know that I'll get to all of them but let's look at the ones that I most want to get to that are still on this is I do still want to read Homebound by Lydia Hope I actually just snagged the audiobook in the audible sale um, Give Me Butterflies by Jillian Meadows. I think that one looks so beautiful. And then Sweet Lullaby by Lorraine Heath. So those are the ones I most want to get to out of that. So we'll, we'll, stick, we'll stick with that. So yeah, um, if you want to do this tag, I'll have the questions down below. Um, this is a fun one to do. Like I said, I was sad that I think I didn't do this last year. Um, cause it's nice to have a track of all of these tags. I don't do a ton of tag videos anymore. They're something that's very fun. I feel like when you're first getting into videos, but at a certain point, you know, I just like to make my rec videos and do that. But again, two other videos you can look forward to from me is I will be filming all my six star reads that video. I'm going to actually film shortly. And then as I briefly mentioned, I'm also going to film a video that is all of the new to me authors I've read so far this year um, and I'll tell you whether I will continue reading them or whether I won't so that'll be kind of like a smash or pass um, type of video which I'm looking forward to so thank you so much for watching this video um, I hope you enjoyed my content today my video make sure you give this a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next one bye